Hello everyone, I'm back filming today, so I already know how this episode ends. Not particularly well. This became a thing. This is a lot closer. Um, I pulled this out because the way it was fitting, it felt like I needed more room actually down here all the way around than I did. Then I needed to um, pull in here. It felt like I needed to add more. So things changed dimensionally here. This seems a little bit more bloused up here than originally, but. I, 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 I'm going to take a, do a little bit of math on that, adjust this just a little bit, just a little, and then I need to finish out truing the, uh, the part of the sleeve that comes in and meets right here. I need to true that out, and I want to take a look a little bit more. Now, I want this on the record. This is not a symmetrical sleeve. This sleeve seems to be out of vogue for today. And if this type of design is used today, I wouldn't know because I've never taken a sewing class before technically. <laughs> I am not a fashion major. I just decided to start sewing and so that's what I'm doing. I don't actually have any knowledge or any background or any actual reason for anyone to, you know, trust what I'm saying about anything. So anyway, so I took this because it's in my Haslam book and it's, you know, and I keep on finding it, especially in relationship to coats. And then I started really thinking about arms and I think that the symmetrical bell shape doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense when it comes to fitted clothing because our arms and our bodies, this, our shoulders aren't symmetrical and the way the sleeve works th this this sort of makes sense that there's a little bit more roundness the roundness gets a little bit shoved over to the back part of this and then it's a little bit more narrowed through here so i'm thinking this is a more true two body shape 3d form of of what we actually are but in flat form i could be wrong if i'm wrong and you know Tell me below, because I'm totally fine with being corrected, you know, if I don't know something. Was, links are good. Links are good. Citations are great. Okay. So, or, or, you know, you could just whip it out of the air and just have a hypothesis. I can't really judge that because that's basically what I just did here. So, okay. Carry on. Oh, and as you can see, it's late night. My hair has gotten fluffy. My face is shiny and I have no lipstick left. That seems about normal. Which, by the way, makes for um, difficult filming in that sense of surreal and everything looks good. And every single one of those 1940s and 1950s sewing books that says, now you make sure that you're perfectly dolled up before you start sewing. When you don't have a measurement between here to here, you have to wonder, well, where do you pull into? Because the only measurement that 
difference that I have is right here and one inch out. So at that point, how do I determine this? Well, that's very simple. You go over to the 10 inch collar and go, okay, the collar should be 10 inches, which I have cut out. Then you take your ruler and you measure the back. This is three and one half. If this is three and one half, and this is half of my back neck, that means I have seven inches from here all the way around. If this is seven inches and I have a 10 inch collar, 10 minus seven is three, and then, so I have three inches for the front part of the collar, which is gonna be, this is the front. I need to divide three and a half and do one and a half inches right here. And that's my point for right here. This may not be one and a half inches for absolutely everyone. That depends on how much of a neckline you want in the back. For me, one and a half inches. There is absolutely nothing less impressive than a pile of cut out pieces of material for making a dress. You feel so victorious at what you're doing and yet when you lay it out and plan to take a film of it, it's just not that entertaining. So I'm going to start sewing this. The construction of this dress is hypothetically straightforward. I'm going to start with the, uh, the jabot, the uh, flounce part. I'm going to trim, turn, iron, and determine if this needs top stitching. Once I have that done, okay, this is one side of the bodice. This I'm going to serge, or actually, I'm going to sew this flat, or I'm gonna get out the serger, haven't determined yet. And then I am going to basically, I think, tuck this in here deter and uh, also ease this in because we know this is too long, which is a good thing because that will help with the easing. And I'm going to then sew this and um, so that it then flips around. Now, obviously, I used the wrong side of this, so I'm going to have to be really, really, really careful to make sure that I'm, I'm doing this right. So let's uh, try that again. Okay, so this is the outside of the material. So therefore... We want to do the seam here and remembering that this is going to get turned the right way out. Let me think about this and then this way. So we're going to ease this in right here. So this over the top, bind all of these rough edges together and with this sewn here, this will be able to flip and it'll flip all the way to the inside. And then all of the rough edges will be on the inside. We'll iron it flat. And then you'll have this nice little drapery right there, there. And then all of the rough edges will be hidden. This doesn't mess yet with here or the shoulder, and when I do this, this will create the nice opening where we put the buttons. Ooh, I don't own buttons for this. I'm gonna have to get some buttons. What you're looking at here is the left and the right side of the bodice sandwiched together the way it would have been cut out. I've uh, attached clips all the way around, 
everything is even, it's the same distance, it's the same, it's the same, it is obviously the same. And then I get this uh, bubbling of entirely too much material. And I have a feeling I'm entirely too close to the microphone. I apologize. What happened here is when the material, when you're cutting, when the bottom part, usually it's the bottom part, will end up swinging a little bit because you have all of that excess material hanging or something and it gets scooted. So you end up with um, material that has a wave in it and it's a, it's a 3D material. It will go around things. And if you, if you swing it a little bit, you'll end up with too much material and it's not the same dimension. Thankfully, this is a crossover in the front where it will go like this and it's supposed to have a drapey effect. And from what everything looks like, I think I can just take off about, it was just right here, just it just didn't make any sense. That's why I did this because I could see how to correct it, but I'm like, that makes no mistake, no sense. So I'm very sure that I will be able to fuss with this into looking correct in the front where no one will ever know. And the only people will, that will know will be looking at this video right now and you'll never tell anyone. Okay, I've got French seams. I'll, I'll clean this up. That's not hard. All the way around. I am now going to French seam all the way from the sleeve down. I like the length, but I think I want to have some lace. I want some trim here. Well, I've got some iron. Well, you know, I've got all the lace in the world. So if, the, if you're lacking lace, it's because of me. All right. And then, oh, I, and then this is going to come in a little bit more because French seam and then I'll likely top stitch that down because I'm seeing how it it's too loose. So probably about right there to probably right there and then we'll have a skirt and I'm going to have a matching um, slip. Okay. Before I finish this off, I want to note a couple of things. First off, I don't want this to just be out like this. I want it to do that. However, I also don't want to iron and have a fold here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to determine something like that. And then I am going to do a long piece of thread that I tack from the base through this first one into here and make it about, let's say two, two inches so that it's not stapled down, but that it has movement, but that it doesn't just flip open like that because this does not look good. All right, let's assume that it looks good. Okay, like it does in the picture. Let's take a look at this. I want to take this point I'm going to hand tack it down on the inside here to make sure that this stays exactly where it's supposed to be. Then I'm going to take this, flat lay it, and I am going to sew two buttons here, which I have a story about. And then this will nicely fold, this will nicely fold, and it will look fantastic. Okay. I need to attach the skirt. Now I've already gotten it so that I understand, I know that all of this can go up and over. The reason why I know that is due to, I sewed one band all the way around that would go right above the high hip. So my high hips are about 36 and a half around. I decided to go for an inch and a half smaller so about 35, so that it would rest right above the high hip, which I believe will cause the blousing effect, which is awesome. All right, let's finish the dress.
Okay, it is almost three, almost four weeks after I had the five days to do whatever I wanted. It became a sewing vacation and it was supposed to be lovely with a beautiful re result. And I can say that a solid half of you are gonna say, I don't see the problem. And another half are gonna go, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Let me show you what we're looking at and explain why I utterly lost all of my squirrels. Like they, they, they escaped and ran amok. And, and, and like, like through all the emotions and like they rolled around in it, okay? And then they ran some more. Okay, so let's start out with the good part. One, here, down. I do not have a huge arching thing in here. This is hitting correct on my body. Take a look at that. It's flattering, but not a overt, which is incorrect for the 1920s. Okay. Let's move to the sleeves. Look at this, people. Awesome. I nailed the sleeves. Yes, I still have threads. I always have threads. You should know that by now. Okay. So I figured out the sleeves. I even added the lace. I love all of this. I did not finish that little thing where I said I was going to go back and forth, put a, put a string through and do all of that because I lost my squirrels before I was going to do that. Okay. This is the issue. So I'm going to drop the camera and we're going to talk. Okay. I am very happy with, uh, here. This line is great. And if I turn the only thing that we can see is that this should be more like that. That's all. It is hard to get that without shaping. So at that point, uh, it's hard to get to that. It should be here. But at that point, this needs to come down more or be fitted more. Or maybe I need to pull this down a little bit more. Ooh. Nevertheless, regardless of this, this is what flipped me out because it shows exactly where I made the mistake. And it took me about two weeks to figure out what I did wrong. The original drafting that, the original drafting that I freaking created, I did this. Like there are no instructions. I chose this. I then ignored from here and here. Remember, this is a crossover and crossover buttons. And these are on the top, so I can move this. There's no buttonholes, we're all good here. Okay, I needed to move this over one inch. I, I drafted this to, to be wider than it is, and I forgot my drafting. And I closed it too close. And uh, it hangs different because of it, and it gapes because of that, because that pleat should meet all the way down. The only, and for all my pleat people, this is the memo. This is the lesson of this entire freaking episode. Other than, you know, make sure your material's flat so you cut it, and it's not going to be on the bias in parts of your material and other parts not. That's a good lesson. That's a good memo. But the other part is this. This is your rear end. This is the front. If we want to drop straight down, this is the widest point. And this is my widest point, which means that I need to be able to go up and down from those two widest points. This is too tight through here. This got pulled in. All of this got pushed up a little too much and needs to be further down so that this can go just straight down. Although I did get the blousing effect that uh, I was looking for throughout the picture.
I am now well aware that all I need to do is stitch up the skirt, re-measure and re-overlap the bodice, redo the pleat. I have plenty of material in there. I do not need to get a different, you know, like I don't have to cut out a new skirt. It's a rectangle. There are no pleats. There is nothing that uh, has been done that can't be completely fixed with no visible, ooh, that's where the mistake was. The only way you know that this dress was drama for me is by this video and that TikTok. I am well aware that this dress is at tops four hours, maybe, before I'm done. Is that what I'm gonna do, however? No, not at all. Not right now, unless a really crazy wild hair hits me. This dress is a classic scenario for all seamstresses. There is nothing that I have done here that any seamstress has not done already. This wasn't even that big of a problem. I just need to move something like by an inch and I have a feeling it's gonna be fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this was a total success. So where's the problem? I cannot produce a quality piece of work, one per week, plus film it, edit it, promote it. I don't have that literal time. And every single YouTube um, algorithm, how to promote your channel uh, 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 station, that hasn't been helping my mental health in the least. Not at this point. It's no longer informative. At first, it was informative. At first, that was helpful. That was a, oh, that's how it works. Now, not so much. Now, this is feeling more like um, panic that's being produced in order to boost their channels. I wish I could say that nicer. I get why. Why? And it is useful, but not for forever. So I changed uh, my YouTube algorithm a lot by deleting every single channel that was on there that was that I subbed over the last two years to prom to help me figure out how to actually do the YouTube thing because this is complicated. This is not a small job. Um, I can spend easily upwards of 16 hours just editing this. Uh, I, when I try to do those things where I'm like, and take a look, I did this, then I did this, and then I did this, and now this is the result. That is a lot more work than it looks like, and I don't think that I enjoy that enough to continue at the rate that I have been especially, especially considering I am learning. You get to see all the learning. You get to see how I do it. But if I don't produce something in the amount of time that I need, and then I'm trying to edit stuff, I find out things like I don't have an appropriate intro. I don't have an appropriate outro. And I need to now do all of the stuff, set up the living room, do the hair, do the makeup, make sure things are quiet, don't have the laundry going, don't have the dishwasher going, and don't have any phone calls, make sure that you have time. So a large block of time to be able to film like 30 works, 30 seconds of, of work. I am no longer in the place that I was when I started, when I started imagining this show and everything. I was using the time concept and the mentality and the psychology that I had at that time. And that was in the middle of when we were all really, really, really um, not going places. And um, I had more time. I do not have as much time as I used to. I'm okay with that because I'm filling my life with things that I love to do and have been enjoying. 
All I know is that right now, a major sewing project being planned, filmed, edited, and drafted, tested, sewn, and then worn, plus the pictures for Instagram, is flat out insane. Considering that I personally need a slower existence. I do. Most of us do. Most of us deserve it. This whole grind and grind and grind until you break thing. Mm. I am tired of all of the, oh my God, the algorithm is changing, panic. I'm tired of it. Okay, the algorithm's gonna change. The search engine optimization is gonna change. The rules change. I'm just tired of it. It's not fun, not anymore. I want this to continue to bring me joy and emotional benefit because if I'm not thriving in a place that I am actively choosing to be, that's just dumb and I deserve what I get. And right now, what I really want to do, I want to paint some silk and I would like to remember how to sew and create at a touch slower speed. So, combining that information that is all valid, true, and right, and not negotiable, I'm going to be trying something new. So this is a channel update now, because I'm taking all of that information, putting it together and going, this is the plan. I'm going to try to produce one video a week, period. It will either be vlog style because that's what I emotionally need, or that's what I can reasonably film in one day, one day. <laughs> or it'll be a silk painting to lead creative thing because I really do need to have that done pretty much now. Uh, Sun's Bar Mitzvah is coming up very fast. I need to get that done. And as for what I am wearing for his bar mitzvah, I will be wearing my 1937 black suit because it's freaking phenomenal. I don't care if anyone's seen it before. No one has seen that on anyone else. I'm it, I'm the only one, period. It's my dress. And so I'm gonna wear a signature dress for my son's bar mitzvah and I think that's fine. Plus he really likes it, so. If I happen to finally pull myself together emotionally and find all of my emotional squirrels and somehow collect them and pull all of it together and I correct this dress, go me. But past that, I'm not in the mood to really lay down any goals or major commitments as to what I'm doing with my time, short of one episode every single week from here on out. And if I do not have the time to do a full video content of what I am doing, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna talk to the camera, and I'm gonna talk to you about what I'm doing, what it is, and I'll show you stuff, but it's going to be less instruction base because I'm really struggling getting that out. And the amount of good sewing teachers out there, you gotta be kidding me, you do not need me to teach you how to sew. If you have specific questions about a specific pattern and how I put it together, now that's a different story and I can absolutely respond to those questions. That's smart. But anything past that, meh, I'm gonna let that go without any guilt or shoulda, woulda, coulda. I'm gonna embrace exactly where I'm at, and that's that. All right, everyone, go be creative. Go do good stuff. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your physical body. Do good things for you. Drink water, 